You're listening to Beyond Wellness Radio, bringing you the cutting edge in health, biohacking, and sports performance. Stay up to date and listen anywhere and anytime on your computer, tablet, or smartphone by subscribing on iTunes. Catch your host, Dr. Justin Marcajani, as he answers your burning health questions as well as interviews from world-renowned guest experts. For more Beyond Wellness Radio, go to beyondwellnessradio.com. Hey there, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani. Welcome to Beyond Wellness Radio. Feel free and head over to beyondwellnessradio.com where you can access our full podcast transcriptions. While you're there, you can also sign up for our thyroid and female hormone video series. This series goes into the root cause of why your hormones are out of balance. While you're there, you can also schedule a functional medicine consult with Dr. Justin, myself, where we'll dig deeper into the root cause of your health challenges. Feel free and think of sharing this podcast with at least one person. This podcast grows by people sharing it. Sharing is caring. If you can think of one person that can benefit from this information, please feel free and share it. If you're enjoying the podcast, make sure you subscribe on iTunes. You can also click below the video or podcast where you'll see the iTunes review button and leave us a review. You can also sign up for the newsletter at beyondwellnessradio.com where you'll get updates before anyone else. Thank you so much and enjoy the show. Hey there, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani here with Evan Brand. Really excited. We got the video going today, so hopefully we'll have the face-to-face connection here for everyone at home. Evan, how you doing today, man? Pretty well. It's sunny and cold, but I'll take it over cloudy and cold, so I can't complain. Absolutely, man. I love it. I know we talked about talking about stress. Speaking of stress, how you doing with stress up there? Yeah, you, know, you got winter and you got cold weather up there in Louisville. How's that going? I mean, it's not too bad, to be honest. I, I love living here in Kentucky so much that I turn a blind eye. I think I put my rose-colored glasses on despite totally. the winter. I think it was like mid-20 degrees Fahrenheit, so cold, but I actually I put together a weight bench in the garage yesterday, so I'm going to be getting some outdoor primal exercise. I joked with my wife. I was like, babe, there's nowhere to put the weight bench. Let me put it in our daughter's room. And she's like, no. And she said our primal ancestors wouldn't have needed to work out indoors. And I was like, fine, I'll put it outside. So I'm going to be getting some, some, uh, what I guess we'll call it cold, cold exposure training and I lifting weights at the same time. I love it. That's excellent. I can yeah. picture your wife using that excuse to, to send you to the store to run errands. Well, yeah, normally, exactly. uh, normally in the hunter gatherer society, the husband would be out for weeks trying to get food for <laughs> his family. You should go to the store for at least the next hour or two for us. I can exactly. Totally picture that. That's smart. I love it. Yeah. Very cool. Well, yeah, here, here in Austin, it's great, great weather. It's you know 50, 60 degrees on the colder side. It gets a little warmer up on the weekends. But we talked about stress here pre-show. One of the big things that I've been doing, and I know you've done podcasts on this in the past. I think you were on Bulletproof Radio talking about this, is forest bathing. Yep, I found this absolutely. awesome little nature trail behind my house down in Austin, and I've been taking my dog Butter and my wife and I. We go for great walks down there, and it is awesome. I'm really enjoying myself. We go for a couple hours. I got my Fitbit on. I'm racking up a couple 10,000-step days over there, and it is great. I know. You feel so much better. For me, anytime that I'm stressed, it's usually due to a deficiency of nature. Totally. Like obviously there's other causes at play, which we can talk about some yeah. of those other causes and effects, but you were designed as a human to be outdoors. And if you separate yourself from the outdoor environment, you're going to have buildup of stress. It's just that simple. Absolutely. And I know the research on forest bathing is pretty, it's pretty, it's, it's quite compelling on the effects of lowering cortisol, lowering that stress hormone. And cortisol is this hormone that's really interesting. And today's podcast is going to be just on stress in general and just natural things we can do. We're going to try to take a different nuanced approach for it. But just getting outside and walking around, not just on your street, but if you can go into a wooded trail, it's it's absolutely great. The effects on lowering cortisol, if you just Google forest bathing, a lot of really good effects with that. Can you go in more into detail, Evan? I know you've done more podcasts on this topic. Yeah, so basically a lot of the research is coming out of Japan who – came up with the term Shinrin Yoku and it makes perfect sense. Of course, totally. you're going to have a reduction in stress compared to the control group in the research where they take salivary cortisol samples of people walking on a sidewalk in an urban area. 
they actually see increases in stress hormones, including cortisol, but adrenaline too. And you see decreases in adrenaline. Not only do you see reduction in cortisol, but you'll also see increased heart rate variability. And the higher your HRV score is, the healthier your nervous system is, meaning you're more in parasympathetic, less in sympathetic. And for us in the modern world, we're constantly reacting to things that our ancient wiring system wants to put us in sympathetic, like a bad email or a bad text message. Yeah. That could put us in fight or flight where we think our survival's at risk, but it's not. Totally. And forest bathing also, there's some cool research. If you type in rumination in the forest, you can read that some of the blood flow to the prefrontal cortex, which is the newest part of the brain, the blood flow actually decreases. And the more reptilian part of the brain in the back increases the blood flow back there, meaning you're less likely to start overthinking and beating yourself up and being self-conscious. And, you know, people are hard on themselves. And I've been guilty of being hard on myself, too. And a lot of time it's just that front part of your brain is just overactive. And that's just due to modern world and technology, social media. I mean, there's a lot of bad influences that contribute. And what's that part of the brain that causes that rumination effect? Prefrontal cortex. Okay, that the prefrontal front part. cortex, the neocortex, the higher yep. functioning parts of the brain. That's great. Yep. Excellent. And also we know cortisol, higher cortisol and lower cortisol are both detrimental, right? Higher cortisol is that tired but wired. You keep on going. You're energized, but maybe you're more anxious. Maybe you have the heart palpitations. Maybe you have excessive sweating and body odor. Right, these are the high cortisol, and again, typically people that are higher cortisol, they at least have the energy and the propulsion. It's like the engine's redlining, but it's still flying down the street versus, hey, the, now the car's going, it's putt, putt, you know, putting along, but now you're kind of in that low cortisol state. And again, high cortisol, what it will do is it'll rip up the gut lining, right, because it'll rip up the IgA and it will tear up the gut lining. High cortisol will also tear up muscle, so you either start getting skinny fat, so maybe you look skinny, but your muscles don't really have much tone to it or contour, or you start gaining weight because now you're ripping up so much protein, you're actually increasing blood sugar from the protein from the uh, gluconeogenesis that's happening. So now your blood sugar is going up from the stress response as well. So you have you can get insulin resistant, you can get sarcopenic, meaning the kind of the flabby muscle, and then you can also tear up the gut lining and then tear up other tissues in the body too, hair, skin, nails, etc. I'm glad you brought up the IgA because I've been looking a lot, and I'm sure yeah. you have been too, on the GI map at the bottom, mm -hmm. seeing how the link between people with adrenal issues, they're going to have low IgA levels, but they're also going to have more infections too. 100%. So not only are you tearing apart your tight junctions, contributing to leaky gut, which can yes. then contribute to autoimmune disease, all stemmed from you being on social media too much, for example. Uh, you can also contribute to yeast overgrowth, bacterial overgrowth, SIBO infections because now your bulletproof vest, which is your IgA, your first line of defense, that's now reduced. And I had a guy last week. He's yes. in his mid-20s. His IgA level was one of the lowest I've seen, like two, maybe, maybe 200. And the scale is you know 500 to 2,000, at least on the GI map that you yes. and I use. And Yet I'll see a 75-year-old woman who you would suspect would have lower IgA just due to stress and aging, and her IgA could be perfect. It could be seven, eight hundred. So just because you're young and overall you you hit the gym and you wear cool yoga pants and and all of that, that doesn't mean your IgA levels. Yeah, it doesn't mean that you're 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 any oh. healthier. No, I totally get it, man. And here's the thing too, right? Is you can be making all these great changes to your diet and to your lifestyle and how you perceive stress. Let me just take a side note here. I'm going to digress for a second. But Dr. Robert Sapolsky, the uh, PhD stress researcher out of Stanford, wrote a book I think in the mid to late 90s called Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers. And his basic philosophy was that a zebra, right, when chased by a lion, they have to run and they basically either live or they die. That's pretty much it. And you'll see a, liver, a uh, zebra that survives a tiger attack or lion attack. I think it's lion attack with a whole hunk of flesh missing from its back. And it's just out there eating and drinking from the water like nothing even happened. So this zebra that's basically close to death is totally turning the stress response on and off like it's a light switch. The problem with us is that our stress switch keeps on flickering on and off all day long because we cannot turn it off because that stress becomes a micro stress and it's constantly being turned on when we're driving, a conversation with our wife or partner, dealing with kids, 
poor sleep, you know, politics, this, that, friendship drama, finance issues. It's constantly flickering on and off. It's like you have, um, you know, a light show going on in your house. That's what kind of stress is happening. Even though you get this zebra who's basically almost died, totally relaxing and, and drinking water and eating grass over there by the stream. Crazy. Well, that's the problem. We got too smart because if you look at – you, I, I know people have heard the stories of car crash uh, accidents where the adults may die in the crash, but the children expect – depending on what age they are, if they're real young, infant, you know, two, three, four, five years old, yeah. the kids will survive because they didn't go into fight or flight. They had no anticipation. They didn't tense up. They didn't flex all their muscles and ah before, before the crash happened, so they're fine, and the adults who anticipated it, they set off the fight or flight. They flexed all their neck muscles, got tight, tense, boom, they broke their neck. They're dead. So I guess what we're trying to convey in this podcast today is so many people are looking to the food and fitness gurus, and they're frustrated because they're doing paleo. And it's yeah. like, oh, I'm, I'm doing AIP so well. I'm doing paleo so well, but I'm still not getting results. And it's like, well, we could look at your circadian rhythm. I mean, are you using your iPad at night? Oh, I'm wearing blue blocking glasses. Okay, but your skin receptors still can pick up light. There's light receptors on your skin. So are right. you just bathing in, in an extremely bright bathroom, plucking your eyebrows at 11 huh. p.m. before you go to bed? This is the other, this is the other factor. I knew that, your eyebrows are looking good today. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so I 100% agree with you, by the way. I think that's a really important point is that we're just chronically under all this stress. My biggest thing is this when, when dealing with patients is try not to look at – like it's so easy to get stressed out over the diet and all the things that you have to do now. My goal is always to look at things from a perspective of what can we exchange? What can we substitute or switch versus what do I have to remove and cut out? Right, Because when you go into this cutout mode, I have to do this now. Oh my gosh, I'm missing this. The key is go into an exchange mode because the exchange mode is kind of like a barter in your brain. It's like you want this result. That result is better mood, better energy, better libido, less brain fog. So for that, you're going to barter. What are you going to give up? What are you going to exchange with, You know, um, let's just call it your functional medicine doctor, us. Right? What are you going to exchange to Dr. J and Evan? What are you going to do based on what they're telling you to do based on their experience and results to get to that goal that you want? So it's kind of we're having this barter and we're having an exchange. Of what, what habits can we put in your place and substitute in for what you're, not, what you're doing that's not getting you the results you want? So if we can look at it as an exchange and a barter and a negotiation versus like you having to give up all this stuff, I find patients have a much better mindset and they're not getting stressed out by their mindset and making all these healthy changes. Agreed. The other thing too that's really helpful if you're stressing out about all the minutia because that's where the success really comes in to me is dialing in the minutia. So getting the shower filter, yeah. getting the water filter, making sure that the butter is good, all of these minutia things that tend to overwhelm people, you want to put those things on autopilot. So once that's programmed on autopilot, for you it's not a struggle to do AIP anymore. Maybe at first you're like, oh, I'm going to miss this, I'm going to miss that. But now it's on autopilot, so it takes almost zero effort to maintain. And that's the goal is to get as much stuff into autopilot as you can. That way you don't even have to think about diet. You don't even have to think about exercise. And now all you're focused on is how am I managing stress? So stressful situation comes at me. I know, okay, I'm going to be more susceptible to go eat some sugar because I'm stressed. And I need a quick glucose to think better. That's what your body's going to tell you to do because that's what you're primed to do. Get a quick burst of glucose so you can think, and then the stress is gone. But totally, if you can, if you can catch yourself and you're on autopilot, then you could just – maybe you do EFT. Maybe you do a round of EFT. I'm about to make a really bad decision. I'm yeah. going to tap this out. All the tapping points. Exactly. I think that's great. I have my push-up bars here. So between patients, I'll be doing some push-ups. Also, one of the best things I got – I haven't told anyone. My patients will know. They probably hear it in the background. I have a walking treadmill now. So it slides underneath my desk, and I stand about three-quarters to half of the day, and I'm walking about 10 to 12 miles, over 20 to 30,000 steps a day. Last week, I walked 75 miles while Jeez. seeing patients. Isn't that amazing? Are you wearing shoes or are you going barefoot? I'm actually wearing sandals. Cool. Yeah, I wear sandals. I used to wear shoes, but they were just too loud. Yeah. Sneakers, they were too loud when they hit, and I went barefoot, and after about 5,000 steps, I started getting blisters. 
I'm sure. But I feel like this is kind of a good compromise. But any of my patients that hear the, you know, the little me walking in the background, I apologize, but I'm giving you 100% of my attention. I can walk and chew gum at the same time. Um, but yeah, I'm really pumped because I'm getting 20,000, 30,000 steps a day. And that's actually helping to lower my cortisol. That's, yeah, great. that's it's, excellent. It's keeping the stress down. And just to kind of reiterate one thing is you talked about the habits. Like once you have like your water filter dialed in, once you have like the sea salt by your water where you fill up, once you have like the stuff in your fridge to make the meals, it's all easy. Because when I go to the to use the water, the filter's already there. When I go to go to grab the cupboard or the fridge, the food's already there. So I always say preparation is the biggest first step. Once you actually go through the inertia of preparing and everything is there, it's so easy to capitalize. It's so easy to to focus. It's like you know, I'm a big Tom Brady fan. I know haters are out there, but Patriots are in the Super Bowl this week. I'm really excited about that. And you know, you got to talk about the game time, right? Well, when that game happens, so much of that game is won in the preparation leading up to that game, right? So, so much of the preparation in our health is won leading up to us making the decisions every day. If we can get ourselves prepared, if we can batch cook, if we can have the water and the minerals in the right place, if we can have our supplements in a really easy set up place, if we can have a good routine where our gym time is scheduled or we have a little setup at home to work out like you do outside, that's gonna let us be successful, but it's gonna lower that stress because it's gonna put these tasks in the random access memory, the RAM, versus having to, having to um, start it up from the hard drive, so to speak. Right. Yeah. Instead of having to retrieve it, start fresh. I agree. I mean, I think what we're what we're saying in so many words is the lifestyle component to me is the most important aspect. Huge. There's so many sick people that have a great diet and they exercise two, three, four, five times a week. Maybe they're doing hot yoga and Pilates and bar and all of these great things and they eat at the hippest restaurants and they wear the coolest leather boots. But at the end of the day, if you're a stress case because you're beating yourself up mentally because there's unmanaged emotional stress or there's a bad relationship that you're not going to cut out. I don't care how organic your diet is. You're not going to be able to out supplement. You're not going to be able to out kale it. You're not going to be able to out smoothie it. You're toast unless you address the lifestyle. So you and I always talk about numbers. It's tough to say because based on the context, our numbers might shift. But for this conversation, I could say 80% of the issue is lifestyle and 20% is combined diet and fitness and lifestyle could include your circadian rhythm so that can include getting bright light exposure making totally. sure that you're in a, a bright totally. environment this could include grounding yourself this could include swimming this could include walking with your dog and your wife like you're doing this can include yep. drumming listening to music dancing yeah i told you i went to my grandparents house and played cards huge stress relief i mean that it's so fun yeah you're absolutely playing cards i mean it's so basic but yet the exchange that you're making in a small lifestyle investment can be far more than a simple diet tweak or beating yourself up because you had an extra piece of chocolate. I think honestly, the biggest battle that people face is themselves. Yep. I agree. It's, it's self, it's self inflicted wounds, whether it's physical because they're under moving or over moving or emotional, they're beating themselves up for no good reason. They're guilty about something because everywhere you go, there's an article about, how bad this is for you or how bad this is for you. There's no deficiency of information that anybody listening to this show has. It's not a deficiency of information that's preventing yeah. people from getting what they want. To me, it's dialing in what, what does it take for you to be happy? What roadblocks are in your way that are preventing you from making yep. the action steps you need to make? I if agree. You, if you've got a constant battle going on with a spouse – but yet you're trying to kick a sugar habit at the same time. I can't tell you that you're going to succeed by just trying to go cold turkey on sugar. You're going to have to take care of the emotional stuff too. It's not one or the other, right? It's not like you can – a perfect diet is going to fix all these other aspects. I guess that's what I'm saying, but I'm just being very long-winded about it. No, you're right on point. I always tell people about the, the patients that we kind of get into care. There's four phases which most people go through during any difficult skill – that they're trying to undertake or learn. And I, I, I call being healthy a skill. And also one thing to add on too, it takes no more effort to get what you want than what it does to get what you don't want. Meaning you develop habits in your life that are running in the background subconsciously that are constantly making you sick and unhealthy. 
Now, we can create new programs and new habits that are running, that are getting you to be healthy. So no more effort to get what you want than it does to get what you don't want. Same thing. So the four phases that people go through typically in their health are this. They're unconsciously incompetent. They don't know what they don't know. They think that grains are healthy. They think saturated fat's bad. They're drinking their soda. They're using aspartame and Splenda. They are clueless, and in fact, they are thinking that what they're doing is actually helpful to them, even though it's not. That's the first step. Now, the, the second step is they're consciously incompetent. Now they're starting to know that they don't know because now they're starting to get sick. They're starting to not feel well. They've gone to their conventional doctor. They've said, hey, you know, we can't help you, or they give them a whole bunch of diagnoses that involve some drugs that don't fix the underlying issue. The drugs cause more problems, more symptoms. Maybe they keep on going back. Now they're given an antidepressant and a psychiatric referral, and they're like, damn, something's wrong. They're consciously – they're like, I know something's wrong, but I don't know what it is. Now that's the point in phase two where they reach out to someone like us, right? Now, phase three is kind of where we intervene, and this is the hard part. Going from phase two to phase three is the hardest. That's where they are consciously competent. Dr. J and Evan have educated the patients. They know the kind of water. They know the minerals. They know the food, but it's hard, and it's tough, and when they mess up, they beat themselves up, and they don't quite know what the best exchanges are. They don't. They haven't made it a habit yet. They're not batch cooking. They're not doing things. They're not prepping the house in a way that makes it easy for them to succeed. So they're consciously competent, but it's taking all of the RAM in their database. Now, yep. Me and you, Evan, we operate in unconscious competence. We don't even have to think to do the habits that we want to do. We just, hey, I got my walking treadmill. I walk 10, 12 miles a day. I got a gym. I got a kettlebells in the corner. I pop out push-ups. You do this. You go out in your gym. You go for a walk with your wife. You walk your dog. You have all these habits. You're getting vitamin D. You're hydrating, and you're not even thinking about it, and there's zero bandwidth being taken up. And that's where we're trying to transition our patients to. And I think any patient that's listening, they have to understand the really big buy-ins in that first one to two months while we get you from consciously competent to unconsciously competent. It's autopilot. Yep. That was well said. That was excellent. I had a thought too, and then I lost it. It was about how the the lifestyle component is brought up. People say manage stress, but they don't know how to manage stress. So let me add one piece of science to this because there's yes. some rational brains that are like, okay, you guys are getting into airy fairy land. What is this actually doing to me? So you have this yes. part of the brain called the amygdala mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and – the amygdala is your – I call it your Rolodex, if you will. It kind of cycles through all of these thoughts, all of these things that come into the brain, and it determines whether it should trigger a fight-or-flight reaction or is everything okay and we're going to press the green button instead. And with chronic stress, so if you are beating yourself up, you're in this transition phase, you're trying to remove bad habits, integrate new habits, and your cell phone goes off. Ding, that notification sound. Here you are trying to have a relaxing lunch. Ding, the cell phone goes off. Now you got to go look at it. Oh my God, it's a text message from so and so. This is the last thing you wanted to yep. read. The amygdala, that part of the brain, is going to go boop, red button, fight or flight. And the more that that red button gets hit, it becomes a hair, a hair trigger. Just like on a really sensitive firearm, that trigger is so sensitive, you better be careful. Unless you're ready to use it, don't even get close because ding, that notification goes off again. Boop. Red button gets hit. Fight or flight system goes. Stomach acid becomes a luxury, not a priority. Yep. yep. So there goes good digestion out the window. Blood flow is now shunted away from the central part of the body, and blood flow is basically going to design be be working to get you to run. That's it. And our goal is you don't want to press that red button. Leave that red button alone. Put a glass case over it so it's a lot more difficult to hit that red button. And this takes practice. You and I talk about this. There's things that can still stress us out and still get to us. But the goal is with the combination of bringing in this functional medicine approach. So this is where the adaptogenic herbs come in. Yep. So like rhodiola. You could look at a research study of rhodiola. 200 milligrams was used in about 1,200 patients. And after just three days, it was – I believe it was above 90% of all of these patients experienced, quote unquote, a massive reduction in life stress. So in this case, 
the adaptogen could be putting this glass case over this red button in the amygdala. So no longer is this fight or flight system immediately, boom, we're not going to hit the red button anymore. We're building up the resilience so you can be a warrior. So next time that text message comes in, you maybe you shouldn't have your phone by your table in the first place, but that's fine. Let's say you have it there. Now you look at that bad text message and you can process it first. So instead of immediately, boop, automatically hitting the red button, you can look at it. Okay, not a big deal. I'll take care of this. I'm going to finish my meal first because I know Justin told me that if I skip meals, my blood sugar is going to crash because I have adrenal stress right now. And if I skip a meal, I'm going to have anxiety. And I'm trying to get off the Xanax that the doctor prescribed yes. because I don't want to be on it anymore. And I want to get rid of this anxiety. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this phone aside. I'm not going to hit the red button. I'm going to put the phone aside, finish chewing my meal, taking my enzymes. I'm going to press Bingo. the green button. Everything's okay. There is not a situation that I need to fight or flee from right now, yep. and let's get back to life. And the more that you can hit the green button with the amygdala and the less you can hit the red button, overall, the better you're going to be because you are not designed to be in fight or flight 99% of the time like we are in the modern world. 110%. I love it. So let's just kind of recap. We talked about stress, how it affects your gut lining, how it affects it burns through neurotransmitters. That's why the more stressed you are, you burn through dopamine, you burn through serotonin, you start getting depressed, you start getting OCD, you start getting ADHD. So all these different things happen. It starts burning up the brain tissue. It affects the area called the amygdala in the brain, which is right around the hypothalamic area, and that affects memory. The so hippocampi we, too. We didn't even yes. we didn't even uh, talk on the hippocampi. So you can you can look at with yeah. MRIs the hippocampi. You have one on each side. It gets marinated in cortisol, and it begins to make these memory centers. Uh, look like Swiss cheese. So people, as they get older, it's happening younger and younger, but people joke about being forgetful. That's not funny. That's a sign that something's going on. So yeah, there's tissue destruction. There's the leaky gut aspect. Keep rolling. Yeah, 100%. So you're ripping up the hippocampus, which that affects memory and learning. So if you have any job, like let's say me and you, Evan, where we're having to problem solve and think all day long, you're an attorney, you're a doctor, you're a nurse, you're a teacher having – you're, you're a mom having to deal with your kids. You're homeschooling. You're, you're dealing with activities. You're multitasking. People are calling. You need that higher brain function to perform at the higher end. I mean I have so many patients that are reaching out to me. They're like, I'm just not I'm, – I'm a shadow of my former self. Yep. Right? They, they have, that's that inner kind of feeling like that. You're just not quite where they used to be. They've aged 20 years in the last year or two, right? So we're trying to develop all these tactics to help. So number one, the diet's in place, the paleo template, autoimmune template, whatever works for you in that, in that realm. Number two, get some habits that you can do with your family that will help decrease stress. I like the forest bathing, whether it's just walking outside or doing a little nature hike, love it. Number three, do push-ups or some air squats or get a desk treadmill that you can walk at while you're at work or in between whatever you're doing. Just get a little bit of movement in. One of the biggest things that CEOs do is they exercise – to not work with their body but to help their brain because they feel exercise helps with their brain and their ability to function and deal with work stress. So the exercise piece is not necessarily an aesthetic thing or a physical thing. It's actually more of a, a mental, emotional thing. Uh, number four, make sure you have the lifestyle habits of clean water, uh, good sleep, good sleep habits and hygiene, and your food, your fridge is stocked with really good food. And then once you have all that piece left, then we can talk about supplements. Then we can add magnesium for stress. We can add valerian or L-theanine. We can add our adaptogens, our rhodiola, our ginseng, our ashwagandha, our luthero, our maca for female hormones, or chastry. We can add extra B vitamins. We can add even adrenal glandular and support. We want to define that more based on an adrenal test. And then the next piece is we dig more into the functional medicine with the gut and the detox and other specific, more nuanced nutritional deficiencies. Anything you wanted to add to that, Evan? Well, I love how you've laid out one, two, three, four, five like that because the gut infections, although massively important, that's so much later down the road. You put so many other foundations in place first and a lot of people, they'll come straight from, we'll just call it conventional and they want to go straight to detox or, hey, I took this detox tea or this detox paleo shake or I went straight into some gut protocol. If all that other stuff's not addressed, yes, it's very important to remove candida. This candida problem definitely is impairing brain fog. If you look Huge. back at 
If you look back at my organic acid test from a few years ago, I had candida problems, and it perfectly exp explained wh why I was mixing up my words. I was putting words totally. in different order, and I had to address that to get the brain better. However, if I just slept better, I noticed 20, 30, 40, 50 percent improvement in brain function there. So yes, it may be candida. Yes, it may be the infection. Yes, it may be the mitochondrial function problems that we're going to have to fix, but – it also could be that you're staying up until 2 a.m. and then you're getting up at 6 or 7. And you say, well, I can just function better on five hours of sleep. Well, you're probably just running on adrenaline, which will give you that temporary heightened sense of cognitive function. But that's because your body thinks that you're running from a bear because why else would you be light sleeping, tossing, and turning all night? There must be a bear around. We're going to have to run from that in the morning. So, yeah, you're going to get that burst, but in the long run – your brain function is going to be sacrificed and your memory is going to be sacrificed. Your sex drive is a luxury, so why ovulate? Women can lose their period. Men, totally. Why have a sex drive for men? If you're running from a bear, that's – do that tomorrow. We yeah. got we to gotta live. Exactly. Yeah, 100%. And one of the things I'm going to put it out there so everyone can hold me accountable as well, but the biggest thing I find too for myself and a lot of people I talk to is mobile devices, iPads, phones, Facebook stuff late at night. It's not good. Yeah. I mean, I think I like to go on Netflix or Amazon Prime or Hulu and I like to wind down, find a nice show that will kind of entertain me. I can laugh. I can enjoy. But I'm finding – and my wife's doing it too – is pulling up the iPad or the phone, checking this, checking that, checking my email, checking a text, checking Facebook, oh, this thread. And it's like my brain's just constantly go, 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 go. The thing I'm trying to do now is I'm putting my phone in airplane mode. I'm hitting the little moon on my iPhone so no notifications come up. And I'm putting my phone in my room already plugged in, ready to go so I can go to sleep. You know how many family members are mad at me because my phone is on airplane mode like 24-7? You're like, you're like one of the only people that I text because <laughs> I'm like so anti-phone. fortunate. Yeah. <laughs> I'm taking you out of your zen state now every time I text you. I feel no, like no, you're not. You're fine, man. You're fine. It's always good to chat with you. Uh, but seriously though, and apparently something happened to my voicemail where now my voicemail doesn't work. So you just get this voicemail has not been set up. I'm yeah, not even going to fix it. <laughs> oh, man. I'm not even going to fix it because that's just one more thing, right? We're always pulled away and, and I want to cut all the strings on things that are pulling me away and checking voicemail is just one more thing. You know how it goes. You get two, three, four, and you got six voicemails piling up. I can't do it. I yeah. totally agree. And I'm, the big thing I'm challenging you and everyone else, else, everyone else out there is, hey, have your cutoff for your phone, right? Whether it's 8 or 9 or 9.30, have that cutoff, put it in airplane mode, hit the moon or whatever that equivalent is on the Android. What's the equivalent on the Android for zero notifications? I think it's a do not disturb mode, do not something disturb. like that. Perfect. Do not disturb mode, moon mode, sleep mode, and then put your phone away. Put it in your bedroom, wherever that charging place it belongs for the rest of the night. And then – be present with your wife or your partner or your child or whatever that nighttime time is that you guys do special. Whatever that routine is, be fully present with that. That's the thing that I'm trying to do. Also, I'm going to be on, I think, I think a staycation next week, and I think I'm going to uninstall, uninstall Facebook for the week. Ooh, I'm proud of you. Well, yeah. so one other thing for me that's been massive is completely getting rid of Wi-Fi in the house. I've completely disabled it, and so now I'm hardwired. And so for me to use my phone, uh, you may think it's funny. But I have an Ethernet cord that plugs into a U an Ethernet to USB C adapter for my, oh my Google God, phone. Dude. And so, <laughs> so, really? so here's yeah. So listen. So this is how much work it takes me to get on my phone to use social media. I have to get I have to disconnect the adapter from my computer, unplug the adapter, plug up the new adapter, Ethernet to USB C, <laughs> then run with the Ethernet cable to wherever I'm going to go use the phone, plug it up to the phone, and then use the Internet access. So for me, putting that many barriers in place, my phone is completely hands-off. If I'm not on calls, my phone does not exist to me. And that has been so massive for my productivity because you get in these social media loops. Well, you got to check this. you got to reply on this. you got to upload new data to this. you got to post an article here. you got to put the podcast there. It's too much. So now I'm actually a guy from The Minimalist. I'm not sure. Did I chat with him? Was it an email? Something. Something yeah. with the conversation of a, a minimalist guy. Um, it was Josh. He said that he completely got rid of internet in his home. Now, for us, we can't do that. That's not practical. But for him as a writer, he completely got rid of internet access from his home. Therefore, he was only able to write on like Word document uh, applications. And then when he would go to a coffee shop or something, 
then he would have the ability to get online and do email and Facebook and blah, blah, blah. So for as a writer, I think that's totally valid. It wouldn't work for us. But like I said, I've still for many, many, many reasons disabled the Wi-Fi completely. And it's enabled me to – I have to be grounded in a set location before I'm going to use the internet as opposed to me just mindlessly walking around the house checking this, checking that on my phone. Yeah, no, I agree. I think we're hitting it in two different ways. You know, I just try to put it in airplane mode and, and sleep mode. And then also the big thing is – you should have took this first, but I do a Christmas tree timer plugged into my router and modem. And the Christmas tree timer, that Wi-Fi – and uh, well, Wi-Fi is gone at 11 p.m. I had that. Day. Every I had day. A pa- yeah, I had a power strip and a timer. I would eat – if we, if we were not home – then I would I would use the timer. I would just let – because the fish tank was on the timer too. But when we were home, I would just boop. I would turn off the power strip. But for me, you know, there's a lot of cool – there's a lot of cool data coming out from Deborah Davis and some of these other oh, yeah, yeah. EMF Wi-Fi experts that are mm-hmm. showing like the different spectrums and babies and and all of that and showing that nature basically drops off around the 2,000 millihertz range. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly where 2.4 – uh, 2.4 gigahertz and gigahertz, 5 gigahertz yeah. router, that's yeah. where they pick up. So basically you have this natural, non-existent field in these spectrums, Yep. and that's where Wi-Fi plugs in. So for me, I don't want to touch that spectrum, especially with the baby around. I feel much better. To me, it's – we don't have to prove it's dangerous. For me, we can't prove that it's safe. So right. for me, it's not a huge deal to just do the hardwired internet yeah. thing. And, uh, and I chatted with Bing Greenfield too, and apparently he, he did that. He, he, in previous conversations, he told me he was just turning Wi-Fi off at night. And last time I spoke with him, he said, nope, I'm doing completely hardwired. So I'm not the only one going, going so old school. I don't have I, dial up. Yeah, I think it's good. I think it's good. But I think if you're not ready to go to that full length, which I'm not because the TVs that I use, I have no cable, no cable TV. So my TV is all internet based and it's, I don't have router. I don't have access to plug in up there. So we keep it going just for the TVs at least. But if not, you can always put your router on a Christmas tree timer and just – and there's even ones that will be like you can change the hours. So Saturday will go longer or Sunday longer in case you're up later on the weekends and you can adjust it. But I try to make it so that router is off for about eight hours a night. So that way I can at least sleep without any Wi-Fi nearby. Agreed. Yeah, I think that's – at the end of the day, the sleep time is most important. Some people go as far as – Turning the breaker off in the room. I've not done that yet. Maybe when I get a new place oh, where I have convenient. Yeah, you can put a kill switch on the wall, but we'll save that conversation for another day. Oh, that's cool. I like that. Awesome. We'll have a part two coming up soon. Okay. Awesome, Evan. Hey, man, great chat. I think we're on video, dude. So this could be a really good one if we get this whole podcast issue fixed. We get the video going, man. Yeah. Like so it. go ch- go check out uh, Justin's YouTube channel. Type in Justin Health. You'll see the videos. You've got what twenty. 20,000 plus subscribers there that are checking out your content. So. Yeah, over 25,000. Really fun. Plus, you get to see our ugly mugs here too. Ah, yeah, don't say that. <laughs> of course. All tongue-in-cheek, man. All right, brother. Good chatting with you. You have an awesome day. We'll talk soon. Take care. All right, bye. Bye. Subscribers there that are checking out your content. Yeah, so. over 25,000. Really fun. Plus, you get to see our ugly mugs here too. Ah, yeah, don't say that. <laughs> of course. All tongue-in-cheek, man. All right, brother. Good chatting with you. You have an awesome day. We'll talk soon. Take care. All right. Bye. Bye. Got a question for Dr. J? Go to beyondwellnessradio.com and click the questions button. Then tune in to hear the answer. Also, if you like the show, click below to review us on iTunes. For more Beyond Wellness Radio, go to beyondwellnessradio.com.